Good afternoon, everybody. It's wee Paddy from across, across the shock. Couldn't get that out there. And I'm coming at you today with what you voted for. Number two on my list of three was the GEC. And it was a big vote for this, which I'm really surprised and happy about. Because sometimes traditional lives don't get the love I believe they deserve. As knife people, I believe we should like all... Not I believe we should. It's nice to like all types of knives. From traditional to cheaper, to more expensive, to stupidly expensive. Having a wee bit of both, or having a wee bit of all, is um, is what makes this an interesting hobby for me. For me. And I have a wee bit of everything, and I enjoy that. But today I'm going to have a wee chat about GEC in particular, which is probably, in my opinion, you know, apart from custom makers, these are probably the best production knives of traditional knives you'll get in the world. I think they are made to such a standard that is amazing. So, a little bit about GEC before we get started. This is the knife, this is how they come. All GEC knives come in this beautiful little box. On the top of the box, beautifully rolled out, we'll give you, now this will be on the blade stock, the tang of the knife. And this is the number, this tells you everything you need to know about the knife that you've just bought. It's in blood red jig bone. You'll see that in a minute. It is beautiful. It's a number 62 pattern. It's not a new pattern. It's been used before. I believe it was a secretary's knife. There's probably been other ones I'm not sure of. I'm just getting into GEC. The zero, that is the number of the blade. The, the, the mark number they use in the factory. And a zero stands for a Warncliffe. And number two, the fourth letter across there, tells you there's two blades. There's also a pen blade in this. And then the 20 is the year it was made, 2020. So all the knives are very easy. You can go back right through them and they're so easy to identify what the knife make is, when it was made and what blades is in it. So they come in this lovely box and the tube as they call it. Uh, I have nine of them and I love every single one of them. I, I have them in a wee <laughs> um, unit across there. I just love them. So there's that. I carry this one in particular, not all, but most mine in slips. This is from Dark Arts Leather in the UK. He makes, he has done, he's been really good to me. Made me different uh, sheets for different knives, different sizes, different materials. Really great fella. Leather, he's amazing. I even bought a handbag, a, a backpack for Sally from him. Uh, he does um, amazing leather work. So, there we go. We shout out to him. And he deserves it. So, Let's talk a bit about GEC and where they come from, where they start. They're quite a modern company. Considering this is a traditional knife and one of the best made in the world, GEC are a modern company. They only started about 2006, and I think their first knife hit didn't actually hit the road till about 2007, but not sure on that. I think that's what's right. And it's now owned by a fella called Bill Howard. Now, Bill Howard is... Uh, he worked for Queen along with another gentleman called Ken Daniels. And when Queen were, their production levels, they were making knives that were inferior to what the Queen model was used to making. And these two fellas didn't like that, decided to leave Queen. And they took a really brave decision, invested their money in GEC and started this new company. It has gone from, it's been a struggle and they fought hard. But now Ken Daniel, he left in about 2011. Nothing nothing bad, he just left to do other things. So Bill Hard runs it by himself. And I can, in just my opinion, in my short period of time around traditional lives, he has increased the, the workmanship, the standard of GEC beyond anything else in the world, I believe at the minute. And the reason I'm sort of doing this talk today is this knife here, I have, this is my ninth GEC, and that's in just in over a year and a half. I have ploughed an awful lot of money. Um, now, I had a wee bit of money last year, so I was able to do it, which I'm very thankful for. But this one, I just believe this is a knife to show somebody who's just coming around traditional knives, how they're made, the standard that you're going to get, and why I believe that you should try them in your collection. Maybe not just GEC. I mean, I started with Rough Riders. Fantastic knives. 440 steel, 440A, it, it's, but it's they're great knives, they work, they'll do a day's work for and most people, for most people they'll do a day's work. But you have Rough Rider and you have a lot of other different brands that maybe the quality isn't as good as this, but for work knives they're great. This as a work knife, as a, a 
just a beautiful piece of art to bring out and show people. If the people know you're a knife person like they do now in my family, they'll always ask me what I've got in my pocket. I see if I've got a tradition in my pocket, the joy I get of bringing it out. The flick knife the kids like, but the adults will always be drawn to something that looks like something that Papa had or Grandad had. Do you know what I mean? So that's the joy in these. So Bill Hart is doing an amazing job. His quality control is just off the wall at the minute. It's just the knives that he lets out of the factory are just as close to perfection as you can get for a handmade knife. Now, this is not um, one person. You know, this is a factory that are making. Now, they're all handmade by the people in that factory that are trained up by Bill Hard to a standard that's just enviable for all traditional knives. Now, they make two different types of knives. They make a titty out, which is this brand that I've got here today, which is their base model, the No Frills model. Now, <laughs> their No Frills model is like a diamond to me. So they do that, but they also do a Northfield Unexcelled model, which is the Fancy Pants model. It gives you the lovely little etching on the blade. It gives you threaded bolsters. It gives you matte strike, picks, uh, matte strike um, pulls instead of just a nail nick. It accentuates swedges. So they are the, the fancy pants knives from GEC, which are stunning. Even more stunning than these, if that's possible. But this is by no means a slouch. This is just not a slouch. So what can I tell you? We'll do a few measurements just to let you see what it is. This is a really slim, really slim knife. Two bladed knife. Just look at that. Look at the, look at them knives. They're not touching at all. There's no rubbing, no rubbing on the sides. Just a beautiful knife. The transition between the bone, and this is jig bone, and the bolsters, the nickel silver bolsters, you've got brass liners. They also do all steel constructions. There's so many different. But the shield is not just glued in, it's pinned in. You can see the little, this is a really clear one to see it. Because sometimes they'll hide it in lettering or whatever. But there's the two pins holding that shield in. That's just perfection. Cut and put in there by hand. So the blades that are in this are the most beautiful Lovely, slim. Look at the profile. Look how slim that is. Tell me that couldn't cut. Um, and you've got a pen blade. Now, the pen blades were originally to, the, the, to sharpen your pen, your quill, the feather. You know, that's what they were used for in knives originally. So a lovely little knife to have to do just bits and pieces. But to get that to lie so low and to make it easy to access, look at that beautiful little cutout. Can you see that? So that you can get your nail into the nail neck and pick it up without any hassle. I just think that addition is beautiful. Really so well done. Just beautiful. So we'll let it down. Let's do the size on her. She is one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a quarter inches long roughly. The blade itself is two and a half inches with a cutting edge of two and a quarter. Which is, look, to be honest with you, I should have, sorry. Um, two and a quarter inches of cutting blade does me for my day's work most of the time. Very rarely do I need more than that. I know we all think we need a, you know, a four inch bladed knife. But in reality, most of us, two inches will get you there. Two inches will get you through a day as long as it's a half decent wee knife. This is more than a half decent wee knife. This is 1095 steel, which is just perfect for everyday tasks. Easy sharpened. You can strop it easily on the back of your belt if you were stuck during the day. There's no problem with it. It's just an amazing pen knife steel. Now, what weight is it? Let's just close this up and we'll give you a weight. Let's turn this on. Come on, machine. On you come. And this weighs two ounces. So a little over the, the, the weight of a bug out. And we know you can't feel that. And this being so small and again carried in a pouch most of the time by me. I don't feel this in my pocket whatsoever. But I want to give you a walkthrough of why I believe this is a knife. If you're ever going to get started in knives, this one just personified personifies 
the the standard of the the workmanship coming out of GEC. These knives are all pinned together, not screws. And I know I'm saying this. I, I'm not being flippant. If you've been around knives and you know it, that's fine. This is for somebody who maybe doesn't know. These are pinned together with brass pins, hammered with a hammer and put together. They are through the other side, and that's what holds the knife. There's a hidden one underneath the main bolster here, but you'll not see it unless you over-polish this, and you'll come down to see where the pin is underneath. The jig bone is just, look, I, I just all I can do is show you, and let you, there is no rub, there's no gaps here. There's nothing catching my fingers anywhere at all here. It's just, and this is, again, put together by hand. And these are worked in, not, everyone is different, if you like. They're not all put together the same. There'll be slight variants, but they make them fit just through sheer craftsmanship, through their knowledge. Let me just show you the back of this knife. There is seven different pieces of material on the back of that knife that are in that knife that holds, that has to be held together. You've got the bone. This is a double brass liner there's actually two there there's two back springs in there the silver two back springs another single brass liner and then another piece of bone that's seven pieces of material that is made by hand file handle put together pinned together not screwed and you know clamped together done by pins i mean is that not just alone enough to make you go blooming heck look at that I can't get much closer to show you the fit and finish on that compared to any of your high-end knives. You show me a high-end knife that's better than that and I'll bow down to it. Because to me, that is just sheer perfection. Bill Hard really should take a bow. That is just stunning. Your workforce are amazing. I, I, I know I'm drooling, but I do. I drool over something like this. Look at them two blades set in there. They don't rub. They don't touch. Now, you will sometimes get that because the nature of the beast, it's a handmade knife that's pinned together. Sometimes they will maybe just move and something will happen, but it doesn't affect the functionality of the knife. But this is just one that they don't touch at all. They are as close as you could possibly get, but they don't touch. And I have used this and played about with this knife. I've had this quite a while now, this knife. This isn't a brand new knife to me. I've had it a couple of weeks. Um, but how beautiful is that? There's the back of the knife. It is just stunning. And what I was telling you about the blades, on all blades you'll get from GEC, it's always the same. You'll get GEC, uh, Tiddy Oot, and USA. It says made in the USA at the base there. There you go. And on the other side, you'll get your patent number, the year it was made, and what blades are in it. That's the same as that on the lid of that tube that you get. But just listen to that. Isn't that just gorgeous? That's done by a spring. A bit of metal put under tension and just look at that. Beautiful. Second, the, the half stop on it just stops dead. Absolutely stops dead. Beautiful, beautiful knife. I, I, I mean, I'm drooling and I, I don't mind drooling whatsoever because to me it's worth it. So let me, sorry, I'll just open it up. And what I'll do is I'll give you some comparisons of other knives that are out there that are from different companies. Here's a case knife. Now, case, this this is a particularly good um, case offering. But the likes of this is just stuck in with glue. It's, you know, this, uh, uh, this is, uh, I'm actually giving you, this is, there's gaps where you'll see the, the joints, but not much. It is a pretty good knife. This is a good offering from Case at the moment, but it's never going to be up to the GEC standard. It just it just isn't. The blade length in this is, sorry, my focus is going on out here. It's probably me moving about so much. The blade length's about the same, but it's a shorter knife. It's a lovely knife, nonetheless, an absolutely lovely knife. And Case are knives that you can buy at a reasonable price, probably about... Maybe not half, but, you know, three quarters of the price of a, of a GEC. Great place to start. But there's also um, Ganzo knives. Or not Ganzo. <laughs> Rough Rider knives that are the cheapest. These are up to $15 maybe. And this is in my card. A beautiful knife. I mean, this is a well-made knife. 
it's not up to the standard of the materials of GEC or case, but to get started and to see whether you like it. This green micarta one I would recommend to anybody. This is a, a, a sway back. It's just absolutely beautiful. Sorry, it's not a sway back. Sow belly. Sow belly, and this is the um, three-bladed sow belly. An absolutely beautiful little knife. So you can start at any price range, but it's like all our collections, we all start really cheap and most of us then progress through and we'll go up the, the ladder if you like. The GEC is the near the top of the ladder for traditional knives that are not maybe custom made with fancy fancier materials and all, but they are the top to me, the world's best production traditional knife. Now, what else have I got? Here's another one I've showed you just recently. I've just done a review on it. This is a modern traditional. Again, fancy blade steel as uh, M390, micarta. Although GEC do micarta as well. Here's a, another offering. This is a GEC in micarta. That micarta is beautiful. It's as good as any of your modern knives. Let me just get that. I'm not getting that at all. Come on there. Oh, come on. Where is my focus gone? Let's see if we can get her down here. There we go. Look at that micarta. Isn't that just beautiful? It is stunning. Beautiful micarta. So don't think the GEC just do old bone and that. They do all sorts of handle material. And that's Bill Hard pushing the company forward, keeping it up to date with what's out there in the market because everybody wants different things. This is a wee, this is a much smaller knife. The thing is, traditionally, they do the small, they do bigger, and they do mountain man knives, which are just huge. Um, nearly four inch blade on my mountain man knife, which is a beautiful big work knife. That's another little GEC, that's the Northfield that we talked about. But here it is against a Kershaw Leak, which again has that Warncliffe, that lovely Warncliffe blade. The Leak is not much bigger, it's a much bigger blade. But for a pocket knife that's going to do just an average day's work, I mean, this is a, a relatively inexpensive knife. What is it, about $50? Not sure. Um, 14C28N. 10, um, 1095 steel on the GEC. Them two knives will do a day's work for anybody. A day's work for anybody. And here is a modern, traditional, not a modern traditional, just a modern smaller knife. This is the two year Saturday night special. Um, I'll just bring this in, which is about the same size, a bit bigger in blade length, smaller in handle, um, not as comfortable to use as a, the GEC um, 62 model, but it just lets you see other knives that are out there that we can buy and purchase. And this is why traditionals mean so much to me because you're getting that standard that GEC puts out and you're also getting different models, different bone materials. You can collect so many dip more different sorts of knives than you can with just normal knives. The traditional knives for me is a part of my collection that's growing and I'm enjoying every minute of it. So there you go. Oh, the other thing that GEC do is Northfield knives. And I'm sure you've seen them with those just rustic blades that Northfield, or Northwoods, I should say, Northwoods, um, which was started by Dave Shirley and was then taken over by Knives Ship Free and they now make them. Will GEC make the knives for Northwoods or most of the knives for Northwoods now? So they're being used in the highest quality knives that are being made now, traditional wise. So that says everything. So for me, I would like to say a big thank you to Bill Hard because he's got me interested in a, in a tradition that I, I hadn't been interested in before at all, before I, I, I started my knife collecting. And now it's my, my passion is getting some more traditional knives. Uh, although I have slowed up now, but that's okay. That's the way this hobby goes. I would like to thank you all very much for watching. I know I've probably gone on a bit long, but I've just enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed talking about GEC. It's lovely to get a successful company. It's lovely to talk about them. It's lovely to see the. I haven't seen the progression, but I've seen the progression in my love for them um, through the Rough Riders up through the case and now the GEC. And I feel as if I'm at the pinnacle. I'll get a Northwood one day, I hope. I haven't been able to afford one yet whenever they've been about. But 
GEC is enough for me. And when you're paying anywhere from 100 to 150 for one of their knives, you can pay much more. I wouldn't, but I mean, because that's they don't come any dearer out of the factory, and I'll not play inflated places, inflated prices. Not too much, anyway. We we'll go a wee bit over sometimes for a knife that I like, because some of them are some of the patterns are harder to get. But I waffle on, nay more, I'm away. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Stay well, stay safe. We're safe over here. Bored with the lockdown, I'll have to say, but making the wee video brightens my day, knowing that you're going to have something to watch and I'm going to go and watch somebody else's. Take care. All the best. Patty's gone. We Haney Haynes cup of tea time. Bye now.